You're known to be a bear, so I'm going to ask you, how do you see earnings season? Do you see this as a, a possible catalyst for this run uh, from the first half of the year to continue? Yeah, I do expect this to come in better than expected, better than the uh, negative 7.2%, largely for the same reason that we saw the first quarter come in better than expected, Frank. We have lots of stimulus go in in that first and second quarter, not only from the bank loans, but also from the Treasury spending down its account. And so I think that that's starting to reverse. I think, I think that we're starting to see the cracks in the Treasury. I think that also the Fed has a problem in that the market is reacting to its own narrative, not the one that they're trying to author. So I think this, this will look a lot like it did last year, where the Fed comes out and re-exerts the narrative that it wants the market to be listening to. I think that we'll have a great second quarter. And then I think okay. we can't get to the numbers that the consensus says it has, has in the back. All right, so a bit of a reversal from you. You actually expect things to be better than expected. That's not normally your thing. So you're saying the market has its own narrative. We want to get your narrative about the market day ahead. What is your WEX word of the day? The WEX word of the day is revelations, and I'm talking specifically about financials. Recall that we use financials to get an insight into what the economy and the consumers do. But it's a tale of two worlds in financials right now, Frank. Right? The big banks have been the winner in all of the macro trends that played out after SVB. But we haven't heard from the losers in those trends, those who are experiencing the deposit flight, those who may feel some pain from CRE, those who may have not managed the balance sheet as well as others. And so I'm really curious to hear from those, because even with the winners, we saw net interest margin tick down in an environment where it should expand. Right. We saw a city's profit uh, decline precipitously. So I'm anxiously awaiting these mid, mid, uh, mid and small size regionals. All right, no, we're anxiously awaiting, Greg, how you would play this market day ahead. So I know you're under the belief that the consumer, the strength of it, is actually weakening. We hit on some other data about consumers, credit card debt at a trillion, credit card rates at 22%, kind of pointing us mm -hmm. to a stretch consumer. How does that shape right. your view of what's investable on a day like this? So recall that my, my outlook is fairly long-term, Greg. Right? And so I would use the next couple of weeks while we probably reach the highs for 2023, in my opinion, to take profits and hang out at the, low, low, at the short end of the curve and make that 5.5%. Wait for the opportunity after the market's digested the Fed's narrative, because that will be a buying opportunity. And hopefully I can shed this bear skin for once and for all, Frank, this year. You know, as we see the futures point to the red, where would you sell? I'm not saying the individual stocks, but different sectors. Where would you look to trim right now, especially ahead of that Fed decision coming up later this month? I think I think breadth will narrow again, Frank, as we go into the next couple of months. I think investors will seek safety where there's going to be double-digit earnings growth. I think those areas will be few and far between, and I don't think multiples will matter because they're few and far between. So the argument against the mega, uh, the mega tech trade right now is a valuation one. And I don't think it'll matter for a number of months, just like the market's trading detached from fundamentals right now. And so healthcare will get double digit earnings growth. Uh, we saw that in inflation where healthcare services was up. T mega tech will get double digit earnings growth. So look there, look where you have margin protection, breadth will narrow, you can find safety there. All right, I'm not gonna let you off the hook with just saying the short end of the bond curve, because everybody says that the yields are elevated, but right. specifically when you say the short end, are we talking a one month, a two month? How long do you want to be hiding out in bonds in your mind to let this volatility settle down before you see another opportunity to buy? So we're doing lots of ETFs right now, Frank, to remain liquid. We're doing lots of CLOs, which obviously track the, the, the rising interest rates. But also on the Treasuries, we're not doing anything longer than six months so that we're prepared when those things mature and have a, a nice stack of cash to go in and buy all the companies that have that structural tailwind and that secular story behind them. All right, so you're buying CLO ETFs? Yeah, so CLOs go up, you know, they pay the prevailing interest rate. And so as interest rates go up, they don't uh, experience the principal deterioration that other bonds do because there's now higher yielding instruments in the market. All right, really interesting stuff. Greg Branch, kind of bearish, not as bearish as normal. You know, you, it seems like you see some light at the end of the tunnel. A bit of a shift for you, I'm just going to be honest. Always great to see it's you. It's all math to me, Frank. 225 next year, 17 times is 3,800.